You have to admire Hitler. That's the thing. Because he was an organizational genius. One of the things I've always thought about Hitler is that, you know, people... You have to admire Hitler. That's the thing. Because he was an organizational genius. You know, the thing that doesn't stop people from being Hitler, the thing... People don't... People don't... refuse the ambition to become Hitler because they don't have the genocidal motivation. They don't follow that pathway because they don't have the organizational genius. They've got the damn motivation. Right, because no one wants to think they're a Nazi, but everybody is one, so... Look, 90, you know, it was 95% participation in Germany. And, like, the only thing that distinguishes, you know, the average person from Hitler is that Hitler was an organizational genius. That's the distinction. It's not the bloody motivation. It's the ability. You think about the Nazis and their goose stepping. and What's happening is that every single person in the military becomes an identical unit, right? A uni they're all uniform. And they're all in some sense, imitating the, the dictator in, in an absolutely perfect way. And so, the dictator wants to impose strict uniformity on the entire population. That's order. Order. In Germany, was that it was an excess of civilization, rather than its lack, that produced exactly these consequences. And that's a far more frightening proposition, and one that's I believe, much more likely to be true. Hitler bathed four times a day. And he was also an admirer of willpower, so he could stand like this for eight hours in the back of a car. And so, I found that extremely interesting when I was reading biography of Hitler. I read this book called Hitler's Table Talk. It's a very interesting book. It was a collection of his spontaneous speeches, uh, diatribes, let's say, at, at mealtimes in the evening for, from, I think, 1939 to 1942. And they were just, they were just recorded by, by secretaries. And so you just got a sense of what Hitler thought about everything. And he was a very strange person because he was very high in trait openness, which actually is a liberal trait. He's a very creative person. But he was also extremely orderly, and so a, a devotee of willpower, right? So he's very proud of his ability, for example, to stand in the back of a car going through the hordes of people that were worshipping him and to stand like this for like eight hours at a time. He saw that as a signal application of will. And he was also obsessed with hygiene. Right, he, he bathed four times a day, for example. And a lot of... I, I learned this. as I, I took apart what happened as Hitler... What would you say? Accelerated his purification strategies. So one of the things the Germans did right off the bat was to institute public health programs. And so they... They produced these vans that would go around and do TB screening. So they're trying to get rid of tuberculosis. Seems like a good thing. Pathogen concern, driven by disgust. And then the next thing they did was decide, well, we might as well clean up the damn factories. Too many rats, too many mice, not enough flowers, too much dirt. And so they had the Germans fumigate the factories to get rid of the vermin. They used Zyklon. Zyklon, I think A, there were two variants. One Zyklon was used in the death camps and the other was used as a general 
insecticide, pesticide. And so that's where that started. And so they started to clean up the factories. It seemed like an okay thing, but then they decided they were also going to clean up the mental institutions. And that was starting to push the envelope, let's say, a little bit too far. And if you read what Hitler said, it's absolutely fascinating because he, he regarded the, the Aryan race as a body. That was his central metaphor, a body that was under assault by pathogens. And so that's why he was always talking about purity of blood. And so his desire to eradicate wasn't driven by fear, it was driven by disgust. And it was a consequence of excess orderliness. So, and you know, you can tell that too. I mean, if you look at, look at how the Nazis arrayed themselves in, in, their, in their political displays, you know, at Nuremberg, for example, which was this massive di display area, huge grounds where all the Nazis would gather in perfect squares, right? Absolutely perfect. Thousands of people lined up in, in absolute precision, and then when they go-stepped and marched, it was everyone was exactly the same. It was orderliness gone mad. You know, and, and orderliness is actually the, one of the sign qua non of an of a industrialized society, and that's one of the things that makes that so terrifying, because it also means that Part of what drove the Germans, to, for example, to their high levels of engineering excellence, for which they were absolutely renowned, not only in World War II, but certainly even now, was that orderliness, that, that unbelievable orderliness. And the thing is, it can get seriously out of hand. And so that's a fascinating thing to know. It was one of the most shocking things I ever stumbled across as a social scientist. And really, I really found it quite alarming because there's a reason to be orderly and disgust sensitive. And the reason to be disgust sensitive is because you want to protect yourself from, from, from foreign pathogens. You have to, because you'll die, you know, and it's certainly the case that many times in human history where cultures came together that had been separated, the results were absolutely catastrophic. Well, that's all propaganda for Hitler. You look at the imagery, you know. He's a knight, that's on the right. He's the, he's the knight of nationalism. Well, that's God the Father too, you know. It's a little bit one-sided, right? Because there's more to the father than the state. That's the thing, and that's the problem with nationalism and its totalitarian variants. And we're moving in the, that, that direction fast, right? You see Europe right now fragmenting again because the European Union is too amorphous and maybe not well enough bordered. And everyone is getting nervous and they're saying, back to the state, back to the state. It's fair enough, fair enough. You, you need to be around people who are like you, so to speak, that you have built a consensus with. But to subordinate yourself to the state and to make its head the, the bearer of the, 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 the archetype of the knight without having that element of individuality in it is absolutely pathological. We've already been down that road, right? Because the National Socialists were hyper-national, just like well, both in Germany and in Italy. And it's attractive again. It's interesting here you see Hitler as a knight and up here there's a bird, you know, and that bird should be the dove because that should be the Holy Ghost if the iconography was proper, but it's not. It's an eagle, and an eagle is a bird of carrion eater, right? It feeds on corpses. Well, it's worth thinking about. That's the woman worshipping the strong father, another representation of Hitler as a knight. And then there's Hitler as wise father. You see, he's surrounded by people there who focused in on him as if he's of archety archetypal import. And then this is a, a poster from, from the Allies, an anti-Nazi poster from the Allies. And you see right there that Hitler and the Nazis are assimilated to a mess of predatory snakes. It's like, well, why? Well, if you want to appeal 
to someone's determination to destroy, you say, well, here you are and you're all ready to go. Let's go kill some snakes. And everyone can say yes. And then you say, well, there's the snakes right there. And the thing is, it's true to some degree because you, you have plenty of snakes just like everyone else. And so it's easy. That's the first step towards demonization. And you can do it just like that. It's no problem. The archetype will map perfectly, especially if there's already tension between the groups or if the other group is identifiable in some manner or you can make it identifiable. Disgust is the best way to do that. Not fear. Disgust. Fear. To fear someone, you have to respect them. You don't want to burn everything that the person that you fear owns. You want to burn everything that the person who disgusts you owns. And so you'll see people who are pushing the nationalist agenda hard, and Hitler did this beautifully. Everything that was outside of the Aryan domain of purity wasn't to be feared. It was disgusting. It was contemptuous. And it should be destroyed and purified by fire. And that was his message. The Nazis were unbelievably great at using fire of purification as a symbolic message.